I put this video together in a way that shows what really happens over the course of a deployment. Not all deployments are explosions, gunfire, fights. That is less than a percent of a deployment. And so that's why I put this one together, was to show basically what a regular deployment looks like. A little bit of what we did, and uh, I threw a couple of little blasts in there, something that we controlled, basically to show what we do when we actually find an IED. My first deployment uh, in the military was to Logman, this little base outside of Kalat over in Afghanistan. And it was from that base that I also earned my, my combat action badge. It was during an incident where um, the Husky had run over an IED, blew up, was disabled, and the uh, insurgents followed on with ambush, uh, small arms fire. We had uh, two guys get hurt. Luckily, they, they were air vac air evac and uh, they're they're all right uh, but yeah my uh, I've had uh, some experiences with logman before the captain came into a big tent that they had a brag uh, after at the end of our training and he came in to let us know where we're going and uh, what kind of a mission we would have and finally came out and said, Logman, Afghanistan. And I couldn't believe it. Of all the places to go, I end up going back to the same base with two different units. And uh, I didn't know what to think. I couldn't help but wonder, does this mean something? Am I, am I gonna die over there this time? Uh, why would I get sent back to the same base twice? Uh, a base that I, I knew was in an area that was dangerous. Um, it was the first time I had deployed where I really actually kind of wondered if I would actually come back from this one this time. Our deployment started in Kandahar where we went to ranges and classes and got acquainted with all the equipment we'd be using over there. Washing clothes in Kandahar was not easy. First we had to walk about two miles to get to this point. But once you got there, all the machines were usually taken and you had to wait around for one to open up. And once you wore clothes were washed, you had to wait around for a dryer. Most uh, military flights are at night and this was no different. We had a couple of Chinook helicopters where we loaded on and flew overnight from Kandahar to Logman. And so when we showed up, I, you really couldn't see anything. But I knew where I was uh, as soon as we got off the airfield and got into the main area, formed up to get our instructions and for them to lead us where uh, our tents would be. And they gave us the orientation of kind of where we were and started walking us toward our tents. And I knew we were going down the road. I knew kind of roughly from where I remember where we were. And I knew we were walking toward the tents that I was at before, but then we passed them. And we kept going and kept going. And at one point, we got to where I knew used to be the fence line uh, of where the, the, we were going outside the base from what I remember. And we kept walking and walking, eventually got to our tents, and I, I knew full well we were outside where the base used to end. So the base had grown quite a bit. And uh, it wasn't until the next day that I could see how much it had grown. Our first mission was to bog, and the previous group had never even gone further than Lane, which we're already past right now. And so for the first time, uh, they sent us out as far as we can go and beyond. And uh, 
we didn't suffer anything or run into anything on that first mission, thank goodness. But uh, they did send us into the fire, as it were, as far as going into the middle of nowhere. Jones, you got binoculars? Can you look to our the trucks 12 and see what that yellow smoke is up on the mountain? Oh, damn. Yeah. See on the mountainside? He can't hear you unless you have the mic. Yeah. Yeah. Soldiers like to think we're tough sometimes, but uh, we always have a big heart for kids and animals. When we get a chance, we like to toss them some candy or muffins, stuff they don't usually get in their villages. Uh, we unfortunately don't get that chance very often, but uh, we do like seeing the kids. One thing we learned real fast on this deployment was that uh, our intel wasn't always correct as far as routes. And we often found ourselves trying to go where big trucks like ours Keep really weren't meant to go. Keep an eye on our intent. Just to, you know, we start dragging, I don't know what to do. Sometimes it's the little things that entertained us. Oh, well, hey, yeah. Cow, cow. Cow. Oh, nice! <laughs> nice kick! And sometimes it was just enjoying the sunset, knowing that you had one less day to spend in Afghanistan. The best feeling in the world is coming back from a mission, knowing you did it, got it done, you made it through, survived, no one got hurt. The second mission wasn't any easier than the first. Our first problem was taking the wrong turn in Kalat and finding ourselves driving through downtown in vehicles that were just too big for the roads. We eventually made it out of Kalat and across the river and we were going pretty well for a while until we got over the Dob Pass and finally ran into the guys that were leading the way for us. The locals were working on paving through the pass, however, there was one spot where water crossed the road and created a mud hole, impossible for our weighted trucks to cross. Our only option was to try and fill it in and hope for the best. are slow. Uh, that's on purpose because you don't want to miss anything out here. If you get blown up, you're not getting help from anybody. Uh, you're your own help. From an explorer perspective, I like going out beyond the standard routes because we got to see things that we probably never see again. I just thought this looked kind of like an extinct volcano. On these longer routes, we always had A and A overwatch positions that covered us from ambushes while we did our jobs. We got stuck out on the side of that mountain 
for about three days, and I don't have a whole lot of pictures or video of that time because that wasn't my concern. But we sure had a fun time talking about it once we got back. Then you go on the radio. Oh uh, yeah, my driver's turning and nothing's going on, so uh, I think something's broke. Oh yeah, there you go. I was hoping it was gonna be the appointments would be like that the whole time. What? <laughs> just go out and see where, uh, where do you think we can go? I don't know, just freaking go walk right right beside the mountain. Okay, let's do it. We, we, we got our overwatch. Down there. All we right. got like special forces overwatch, we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> One thing we gotta worry about is dying in a rollover. Yeah, what was that that special forces thing say? Y'all were like awesome. <laughs> Bobcat, though, or something, to like make the road for us. We just, little by little, we keep going, making a new road. I'll tell you tonight when Bogler was telling people to shut the fuck up, he was doing this in that little whoop section of the jump. Yeah. Now, all you can see is the lights right in front of you. I was like, man, this is fucked up. And then the daylight comes up and everything's wide open. There's all kinds of room. We're out there in the dark going, No wonder we broke shit. We're turning around in the same jacked up spot we're on. Especially when it's our truck broke. 50 acre field right next to it. That's why we don't do that for I woke up one morning and this guy was sleeping at the end of my bed. I guess he just wanted some company. Getting back to Logman was still going to be an issue. Some of our trucks aren't made for the off road. <laughs> Oh, there's money. Where's some darkness? Sergeant McHugh was our local Condor salesman, and he had these camo hats that everybody loved. Gators and Brewer love the, 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 the hats. Love them. That's all they keep asking me. Sergeant McHugh, it's okay if we're hat, right? We're vacation! Wear the hat! Hey, it motivates us to do When we get out of the lobby this time, get back to work. Get rid of that shit anymore. All vacation in the countryside. Early on in the deployment, uh, we had a lot of guys not used to getting ready for missions, so our mission prep was four hours. Naturally, that meant if our SP time was 8 o'clock in the morning, we were getting up at 4. Our early briefings were also outdoors, in the freezing cold. And uh, that changed pretty quickly. We found the tent and we figured out a way to get it done a little warmer. Clearance missions are very, very boring. They are slow and they take all day to do. And unless something goes off or you find something, uh, yeah. Here's that road. There's nothing out here. 
but we have to drive at like <laughs> five miles an hour, maybe slower, and check all of these culverts. It's a real good time. That's my driver getting some donkey uh, video there. Because that's the only entertainment out on this road. <laughs> We also found ways to entertain ourselves. Yeah, ciao. Seeing is, is uh, me and Rob got this kind of ongoing disagreement about urination in the bottle of the truck. And you you agree. Right, I'm I'm all about it. You, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Rob's not so much about me uh, he, urinating in the bottle of the truck. He don't like that. Um, in his own words, it's kind of a phobia, <laughs> yeah. as he would say. Uh, so today, uh, I, I prepped some Prep some props. Oh, okay. <laughs> Prep some props. We, we get down the road a little way. Uh, before that, Rob actually made me go pee in the porter jar before we left. <laughs> I went to my daughter. Right, right. Right, right. He, he, says, he says that's the new standard. So I went pee for him. And uh, everything was good. Get down the road. We get down the road a good ways, you know. Ways, we got my dip right. bottle up there. I've got a half bottle of Gatorade. And, uh, it's like, Rob, I'm starting to feel that feeling, man. Daggers aren't. We ain't doing that. <laughs> Rob, you know how it goes, man. Speed before we left. He does his typical <laughs> little uh, his little threat. I'm going to hit bumps, and I respond back, look, you hit bumps. I'm pulling out and spraying. Right. If you're going to do it on purpose, so am I. Right, Fair right. is fair. So uh, I down the other half of my Gatorade real quick. He's like, Rob, it's going down now. Stobie's in the back like, do it, battle. Do it. Just do it. <laughs> so I feed him a ball. Right, right. Sit my bottle down, you know, tuck it in my seat. Right. Grab my other bottle. Yeah, the one you had stashed. Stashed bottle. Yeah. <laughs> so Rob's kind of looking on this left hand turn we're taking. I take a big old swig out of it and I got it sitting on my knee. Yeah. Rob turns around. Sir Stovey, we need you for this part. <laughs> you got it on your knee. Rob, I got it on my knee. Rob turns around and goes. Oh. You drinking your piss? You drinking your piss? You drinking your piss? And I look, I look up and I see, I see Sir Wire just looking at me like, and just go. Yeah. <laughs> you drink your piss? You drink your drink your piss? Sir Stubby, you drink your piss? You drink your drink your piss? So he starts questioning me on why I finished, I finished my piss. The funny part is when I, when I initially put the bottle up there, he caught a glimpse. He's like, you need to hydrate. And we had the argument of, well, if I hydrate, I'm going to have to pee in the bottle. I'm going to have to pee in the bottle. So I down the other half, it's like, you just finish it? You just finish your piss? And I was like, well, man, I already fucked up. I might as well just, I might as well finish. Everybody wishes they were in bed. And you're, I was like, Rob, you're a medic. It's okay if I do my own ones, right? Rob's not having that so much. No, and then you fucking burped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just drink your piss and burp. <laughs> Last time I was here, there was no road. It was just a rutted path where all the other cars had gone. And uh, it was kind of amazing to see that you now we could just take a road out here. The Special Forces guys didn't always respect our quiet. The biggest secret you keep in the military is your birthday, for obvious reasons. Hey, can somebody go get some good clippers? We put it off for as long as we could, but eventually we had to start doing dismounted patrols. The LT purposely picked a fairly open area that uh, was pretty safe as far as the first dismount. We didn't want to get caught in something we just needed to get out of practice and uh, show our afghan buddies how to do it for obvious reasons uh i didn't like getting out of the trucks 
but once I got out there and and figured out how I can mount my camera and get views of Afghanistan that we otherwise weren't going to see from the trucks, uh, I actually kind of like some of the dismounts, some more than others. This was on one of our early dismounts uh, outside Kalat, which uh, was just to the east of our base uh, where Logman was. And they just wanted us to check out uh, around the village, kind of a show of force type of deal. And that's what we did. We just uh, walked uh, a little bit through the village area and then uh, out along the river. The Tarnak is the uh, large river that runs by uh, Kalat. I saw that. There's a hole right here. Here. Here, Sark. There's a hole right here. Check this out. Check out this hole. Quite a few of the holes that we found near the river were actually just wells that people had dug down in there. This was uh, one of the more finished ones. Heading back to the trucks, uh, this was the first time we had gone actually through a village. Uh, going out was actually kind of skirting out around the outside. So this was a, a little bit nerve-wracking sometimes. You never know what's uh, going to be around the corner. Everybody in a village is uh, aware of what everybody else is doing over there. So if you don't see anybody out, uh, it's more likely that something's going down, something's going to happen. But if you see a lot of people out, that's actually a good sign for us. We like to see that. Uh, and it allows us to interact with the people a lot more. Our dismounts were usually about uh, one or two miles, and the trucks would meet up with us at the end. And then we continue on with our road clearing mission. As we got more used to doing dismounts, we uh, felt more comfortable about getting into the underbrush and, and getting right, more well, distance between the two groups that would go out each time. They planted their grapes on the sides of mounds. They were able to irrigate that way and keep the grapes up in, uh, in a drier area without uh, being able to tie them up. This did make walking a lot harder. For the most part on these trips, both sides treated each other yeah. as really a curiosity. They weren't sure what to do with us and we just uh, kept an eye on them to make sure we were all right, but uh, we left each other. Tell them to keep behind us. For the most part, the dismounts were pretty boring, but uh, occasionally we'd find a cave or a hole in the ground that looks like it might hold something. We kind of like those. We like to explore just to have something different to do. The danger was always there, but uh, that's just what we had to live with. Yeah. See all the stuff right here? It was used to hide it. Right there? Yeah. They were all hiding it, so you couldn't even see it. Yeah, obviously somebody. That's probably Osama. Did you clear around to get on that other side? Osama probably Yeah, we cleared around that. this way, all the way up to the back. So you here. went through to get over there? Rodney through that hole. Went through this hole here. Oh, that's kind of a key. On the other it's side of this like formation that's here that's is the Tarnak River. And when it floods, it uh, comes up and it goes through these soft dirt layers. And it ends up creating these caves. Uh, and that's what this was. Except somebody had been using it and there was evidence of that person being in there. And not knowing what we find, we always have to take precautions, but we always have to uh, let the higher-ups know what's going on, what we found, 
Maybe we found the clue. Maybe we found the cash. We never know. Coverage. Let them know what we got. What do we got? We've got an opening in the thing where somebody's been. They've got scorch marks on the wall. They can tell where candle marks have been. Let them know up there what we've got. We've got an opening in the cave, approximately 25 meters down. Got my weapon? Platoon sergeant always had to stay with the truck, so he never got to go on any of the dismounts. And anytime we found something that uh, looked interesting, he uh, really wishes he could have come with us. He's wishing he was down here. <laughs> you wouldn't fit. <laughs> the cave was not long, but it took him a while to get through it, being so uh, narrow. And they found their way through and out into the other side, back out into the Tarnak River. Like, see, if the roof was like probably about that high, you're literally just in the I got a photograph of Many a boot got muddy on some of these dismounts. Like everything else in life, the military is always about giving somebody else a hard time. There's every man for himself once he made it into the cave. I made it into the cave, sir. Oh, I got into the black. The black? And I was like, I don't have a flashlight. Well, fucking okay, chipper flashlight you walk around with. <laughs> All that was left on the outside was the big guys who could have fit in the bags and didn't want to go in. I'm telling you, with all my stuff on, this, it wasn't This shows me that you really can't fit when you come out of the Yeah, because I'm like, I can't fit in this. I hit my head and I was like, and before they even said anybody else, I was like, dude, drop your eye on TV. You'll you're like, I guess I could do that. <laughs> Going through somebody's orchard. Some dismounts were a lot easier, wide open, uh, no leaves on the trees, you could see everything. Obviously it was a much more boring dismount, but sometimes you like those. One of our missions was to find a safe passage for our vehicles. We were going to have a whole lot of vehicles crossing this river, and uh, we needed to find out which uh, area was the, the most I passable. Come straight across. I haven't come straight across here and right over there. We literally walked across and found a real shallow piece and we tested it by bringing one of our vehicles down. over in Afghanistan is called Zerang and it's a brand name you can look it up on the internet but it's a three-wheeled motorcycle and they got all kinds of people back there that you could get six seven people back there and uh, run them up and down the city wherever they needed to go Shijoy wasn't as big as Kalat but it always seemed a lot busier that's because their main shopping area was along Highway 1 where we had to go through for our missions In the early days, the soldiers would throw out candy and stuff to the kids, and the Romanians still do that. So typically when we drive by, the kids always think they're going to get something, and that's why they always surround their trucks. The hide was a handheld information device, and uh, I really didn't like having to do this, but every so often we'd have to pull over and we'd have to put six or seven people into the hide system, just random, pulling cars over and having people come over, and somehow I got in charge of this thing. I'm not sure how or why, but I was the one that hated it the most, but yet I had to run the darn thing, and uh, didn't really agree with it, but we do what we have to do, and as long as I'm not shooting somebody, I really can't argue against it, so we did it, and uh, didn't like it, but we ended up stopping doing it in uh, halfway through the deployment. I think uh, we had some incidents and guys, uh, they realized they could target us on these some of these dismounts, so we stopped doing it. I'm gonna take a couple. The locals were used to it and they knew the routine, so 
we pull them over and uh, uh, get one or two of them to come out of the vehicles, depending on how many were in there. <laughs> but uh, never did like doing it, I guess. Just didn't seem right. Surviving deployment is a lot more than looking out for bombs and not getting blown up or shot at. A lot of it's psychological, and you gotta find the humor, and you gotta find something to keep you busy. You gotta celebrate New Year's Eve. We might. Oh, all the drivers are gonna have drinks. All the drivers are sober. We're not letting them drink. We even had our own version of an airsoft rifle. <laughs> For everybody out there that thinks Afghanistan is nothing but a desert, it is not. It has mountains and valleys and actually the climate is probably a lot like Colorado, very dry. But it does get snow, certainly in the mountains, and we were pretty much at uh, 7,500 feet or so. And so we got to see snow, and a lot of it, a lot more than I had the first time. And that snow got everywhere. If you couldn't tighten down your uh, hatch on your truck, that snow would, would get in there, and it got all over the place. So we oftentimes had to dry out the trucks uh, before we went out on missions. <laughs> Could get run over by a truck. We had modern technology and modern clothing designs on our side, and we were still cold. I don't know how some of those people over there did it with sandals and loose clothing, but they did it, and they, uh, well, all I can say is more power to them. Some guys had some unconventional ways of heating their cabs, like this guy who lit a fire in his. Kids are the same all over the world. Going to that part of the world, you always wonder exactly how old some of these things you're looking at are. I have no idea how old this was, but it certainly looked a lot older than me. Given the way some of them drove over there, we were surprised we didn't see more accidents like this one. We did see a few of them. It was a head-on collision that uh, we're pretty sure the driver didn't survive. This was a head-on collision between a couple of semis, and again, the driver of this truck did not survive. These two trucks were the result of an uh, insurgent attack. They ended up getting burned out and, and uh, left there. This bus here originally crashed in another area along Highway 1. Looks like they were trying to transport to another area when they uh, had an accident on uh, this bridge. The buses did a lot more than transporting people in Afghanistan. Yeah, what it is. Stacks of foam. I 
waiting for this truck to flip over, but he never did. I don't know how he balanced it. sunsets. They always meant the end of another Afghanistan day. Five years later, and it looks like their road has bypassed where we got hit the second time. And it leads up above the river. I don't know if we're going to go back down by the riverbed or not. Or the road keeps going the other way. I haven't been this far yet, so we're about to find out. Five years later, and I finally got to see the back side of the hills where the insurgents were shooting at us the first time. And, uh, well, to be honest, it was kind of a letdown. You always have this image of what's on the other side of the mountain, and when you get over there, it's, well, it's just the other side of the mountain. The rollers, which were supposed to protect us in the event of a blast, they were supposed to take the first hit. They were nothing but problems for the entire mission. Every so often the arm on the Husky went down and we'd have to use one of the, the backup trucks to do it. And on this particular case it was my job to check out all the culverts as we drove along. We'd uh, get the arm down there and look through it with the camera to make sure that there weren't any uh, IEDs waiting for us. Eventually signs of spring came back like these blooms on the trees. We also got to watch as the Bedouins made their way back north from their winter grounds. Sometimes these deployments feel like you're going back in time, quite literally back into the Bible. The helicopter pilots oftentimes didn't seem like they had a mission because they were more than happy to help us out and keep an eye on us as we went down the route. Not for long, but for a few minutes anyways. And uh, anytime they had a chance to help us out, they loved doing it just because they, uh, they got a little bit more excitement than they usually get. had our own opportunity to help out. We were driving down the road and we saw this kid and he was having a hard time getting his couple of sheep out of this <laughs> uh, wet riverbed that got stuck in the mud. So our resident Oklahoma cowboy got out his rope and he was able to rope these, these uh, sheep and we were able to pull them out for this kid.
Yeah, that was the big one. Oftentimes we'd have to block the road. We didn't want anybody running over the IEDs we found, and so we'd block it off at both ends. And uh, the locals didn't like that. They still felt they needed to get to where they wanted to go. And uh, they did it however they could. We didn't have a lot of dust storms over there like I saw in Iraq, but we did see a lot of dust and we did see a lot of dust devils. That was the big thing were the dust devils. This mount wasn't very exciting, but I didn't want it to be. I was glad we just went through these uh, fields. You could uh, see some of the grapes coming out. And it was just a nice walk. We did about two miles, and then we got back in the trucks and continued on with our mission. But uh, it was nice getting that last one out of the way. One of the last missions we did it happened to coincide with the end of Ramadan, so everybody was out in their brand new outfits and celebrating and, and having a good time. So it was kind of a, it kind of correlated with what we were doing. We were finishing up our time in Afghanistan and everybody was out having their own good time. We were glad to be done with it.